Taser guns have become a crucial part of the arsenal of defence of police forces across the region and their use is on the increase. The case of a man from Manchester who was shot with a 50,000 volt electrical charge from a taser after suffering an epileptic seizure at his gym has highlighted the controversy around these potentially lethal weapons. Guy Smith investigates. OK, walk out the door, show me your hands. Come on, come to the doorway. Taser, taser! To officers, it's the crime-fighting tool of choice. We have to make sure that we bring that situation to a very swift conclusion. But to the public, tasers are controversial. A police weapon with deadly potential. People will die. It's bound to. From what I can remember, the police have come and just took over a medical situation. Hold the Taser X26 and the first thing that strikes you is how tiny and how light it is. It feels and almost looks like a child's toy. Attach a cartridge though and it assumes its full potential. Put it down! Put it down! In this police training session, the full force of the Taser's 50,000 volt shot is put to the test. It's the most powerful weapon in the hands of a non-firearms officer in the UK. Howard Soiree was tasered by police when he became violent following a seizure. Witnesses say he bit and punched paramedics as they tried to treat him at a gym in Manchester in November 2009. I've just felt a little bit lightheaded while I was doing some warm-up work and then I just remember waking up in uh, intensive care. From what I can remember about the incident is that, you know, the police have come and just took over a medical situation. and. They're referring in the IPC report about violence, but I was just having a seizure. He spent two weeks in intensive care with kidney failure following the incident, although this was later confirmed to have been caused by the seizure and not police actions. The case was investigated by the Independent Police Complaints Commission, which concluded officers did not use excessive force and their actions were within their training and did not breach force policies but it called for a review of the use of taser guns on people whose violence resulted from a medical condition. It has, like, knocked my confidence where I don't really like to go out much no more in case I do suffer another uh, seizure. And I, this time I don't wake up. You know, and that's the, you know, the frightening thing about it. Greater Manchester Police said officers acted within the guidelines in the case and in a statement they told Inside Out... Officers authorised to carry tasers do receive specific and detailed training to deal with this type of scenario and are trained to always consider whether a subject's behaviour may be linked to a medical condition. The police can taser anyone at any time in life-threatening scenarios, but some believe officers are abusing these powers. The use of the tasers, in my opinion, and my clients' opinions, they have been used unlawfully. Sophie Khan is a lawyer who specialises in human rights, but recently her work has been dominated by claims the police are misusing tasers. There are some circumstances where the taser can be used, but the ones that I'm dealing with, they've been inappropriate uses. Confronted with dangerous situations, officers are expected to make split-second decisions. And there's a particular risk to people with mental health conditions, with heart conditions, with people of small stature, with children, with elderly people. All of those situations, taser is risky. The issue is with the police, they have to identify when and where to use the taser um, and not to do a knee-jerk reaction and just deploy the taser when and in any circumstance, which is what's happening at the moment. In America, tasers have been cited as a contributory factor in the deaths of more than 300 people, according to Amnesty International. And research has shown that repeated tasering can be fatal. Before being allowed out onto the streets with stun guns, every officer receives 18 hours of training. Taser, taser. Hold, hold. They're taught to look for any signs of abnormal behaviour that may indicate a suspect's potential for violence. With regards to how they read people, what we have to look at is what is that person doing at that particular time. On the front line, officers have a number of weapons at hand in the fight against crime. Occasionally, they deploy tasers alongside CS spray. Our research has revealed that when they are both used at the same time, there are risks. We set up an experiment to see just how dangerous it is. 
This shield has been rigged with the same voltage as a standard police taser. When it is doused with CS spray, this is the result. In a leaked document, we've discovered that last year seven incidents were referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission. In each, CS spray and taser had been used together. In two of those cases, members of the public suffered burns. You've got a number of officers turning up to an incident and almost simultaneously someone sprayed someone and another officer felt there was a bigger threat and discharged taser. While the fresh liquids on that person's body, the moment the electric spark took place, the whole thing uh, incandesces and burns. It's almost like tipping brandy on a um, Christmas pudding. The Association of Chief Police Officers says it's aware of the issue and that there is training guidance for officers about the potential flammability when using tasers. Erin Bauer is head of a company that specialises in providing UK police forces with high-tech training applications and restraint tools. He's spent the last decade trying to eradicate the combined risks of tasers and CS spray. We've done a lot of research with the Home Office and the police looking into non-flammable incapacitant sprays that work at a totally taser safe. Peter Nehru led the introduction of taser into the UK almost 10 years ago. Now retired from the National Police Improvement Agency, he warns there are clear risks to the public. That's a real risk and it's not an acceptable risk. It's just not right that somebody gets burnt as a result of the police use of force. So how acceptable then is it that some forces are still using CS spray? Well, it's as they introduce taser more generally, they should be going back and really reconsidering all the risk. And this is an obvious one. CS plus taser equals, equals spark plus flammable material. But despite growing concerns about taser, they have become vital tools in the police's armory. Statistically, on 90% of occasions, the mere presence or the showing of the taser itself is enough to make people think twice about what they are doing or what they are about to do. We clearly appreciate that as a, as a distance control weapon against very violent people in life-threatening situations, a taser is more preferable than a firearm, and it has a role to play in policing, we recognise that. But we do not want to see electroshock weaponry, firearms that are defined in UK law, rolled out to every single officer. In Britain, the IPCC is currently investigating 33 out of 86 complaints from individuals shot by police with tasers. They included that of Dale Burns, a taxi driver from Barrow in Furness, who died after becoming embroiled in a physical confrontation with police. Although the taser was not found to be the cause of death, the IPCC is still looking into the case.